The X-Men series gave us a lot of female villains, and sure, all of them have their fan following, but there is something special about Madeline Pryor. The Jean Grey clone, who was made by Mr. Sinister for his sinister plan, ended up going down a path of villainy that won over fans, and her redemption arc is just as satisfying. In today's video, we will take a deep dive into our favorite Goblin Queen and learn her secrets. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Who is Madeline Pryor? How does she get her mutant ability? Since her first appearance in issue 168 of Uncanny X-Men, Madeline Pryor has captured a lot of attention from fans. It was because of her uncanny similarities with Jean Grey. With those flaming red locks and a face that was eerily similar to the then deceased Jean Grey, Madeline was a person who most people did not find easy to truth. Also, when Professor X realized that his mutant abilities were not effective on Madeline, and that when Dark Phoenix committed suicide, Side, there was a plane crash and Madeline was the sole survivor of that crash, the plot thickened. However, soon after, we realized the truth behind Madeline's uncanny similarity with Jean Grey. Turns out, that memory of surviving a plane crash was actually not a real memory at all. Mr. Sinister, the X-Men villain who has repeatedly showed up to bring chaos into the lives of our favorite heroes, had created a clone of Jean Grey. This was because he thought that if Jean Grey, as in Marvel Girl and Scott Summers, aka Cyclops, had a union, they would end up creating the most superior mutant. If Mr. Sinister could control such a mutant, he would be able to defeat the apocalypse, and with this in mind, he decided that the best call of action would be to genetically clone Jean Grey, who was actually being very reckless at the time as Dark Phoenix. This exact clone of Jean's is Madeline Pryor. Now, once he made the clone, Mr. Sinister edited his plan accordingly, and decided that the best call would be to have that superior mutant baby by getting Scott and Madeline together. However, even though the clone was made, it did not show any sign of life or any sign of mutant abilities in its puberty. Because because of this, Mr. Sinister decided to discard the clone as it was and forget about it as, in his eyes, it was a failed experiment. He kept Madeline trapped in the incubation tube where he had aged her up for so long. Now, we know that out of all the characters in the Marvel X-Men universe who have been the host of the Phoenix Force, only Jean is the one who has had a long, drawn out, almost friendly relationship with this force. So when Jean Grey died on the moon as Dark Phoenix, the Phoenix power that had initially borrowed a part of Jean's soul tried to return it to her. Jean's body was held in suspended animation, and even though the soul would have helped Jean, she instead rejected it instantly, leaving the Phoenix Force to wander the Earth aimlessly. That was when the Phoenix Force was able to locate Madeline, as Madeline was an exact genetic replica of Jean. The Phoenix Force, at least a piece of it, got into her. This force eventually brought Madeline to life, which led to her being the center of Mr. Sinister's attention again. Madeline finally showed some promise and the potential to reach the powers that Mr. Sinister had hoped she would. So, Mr. Sinister gave her the name Madeline Pryor and gave her this background where she was a pilot who was the sole survivor of a plane crash. As Mr. Sinister had a rather unhealthy fixation with the Summers line, he sent Madeline to work as a pilot for Philip Summers, knowing very well that eventually she would meet Scott, and as she looked like Jean, Scott would fall in love with her, giving Mr. Sinister the mutant super baby that he wants. Is she an Omega level mutant? Now, as X-Men fans, you would know that the level of a mutant is very important when it comes to understanding how much of a threat the mutant holds. For example, Omega level mutants are mutants whose powers do not have an upper limit. Jean Grey is an Omega mutant because we truly do not know if her powers have an upper limit. Like is there anything that she cannot do? We do not know why Jean Grey is such a threat when she is Dark Phoenix. But we are not here to talk about Jean Grey now, are we? If we look at Madeline, she has the genetics of an Omega level mutant. Mutant. However, as far as we know, each mutant develops their powers due to some type of situation. For Jean, it was losing her friend, but Madeline did not have any such trauma. She may think she did, but she did not, because the plane crash was a false memory put in by Mr. Sinister. So in a way, if we look at Jean's mind and soul, which made her an Omega mutant, Madeline does not have any of that. I mean, it is no secret that Madeline was considered to be a defective clone, and Mr. Sinister only changed his mind about her when he saw that the piece of Phoenix Force brought her back to life. But then again, as we look at her character arc in the following comic books, we learn that Madeline is able to control the Goblin Force, the same force that has taken out Galactus in the
Phoenix Force in an alternate universe. So the Goblin Force that Madeline is so good at handling and controlling does have the ability to give her that limitless source of power that she needs to be considered an Omega Mutant. However, we know that this power was triggered in her after she made a deal with the demons. For all the above mentioned reasons, this question is a huge debate for fans of X-Men. Several people think that Madeline is just a defective clone. She should not be this powerful and be able to defeat seasoned mutants like Emma, Rachel, or Magic because she is not that skilled. However, a lot of fans want Madeline to be the Omega level mutant because her powers are very cool. Now, while this is something you can give your opinions on, my dear watchers, in the Dark X-Men issue 2, we see a confirmation that our dear Madeline has Omega level powers, which makes her quite the threat. Becoming the Goblin Queen, what triggers Madeline's prior transformation and alters her body? Now, definitely when we learn about Madeline and her Goblin Force, we have to understand what played such a crucial role in turning her into this. So, owing to Jean's genetic components and the shard of Phoenix Force in her, Madeline had powers similar to Jean's, telepathic abilities and telekinesis mostly. However, when she came across the demon Sim, she made a deal with him. You see, Madeline had seen her husband Scott with Jean, who was now alive. Moreover, she had noticed that since since Jean's comeback, Scott had been absent as a husband and Madeline was not too happy about it. She was sad and she was angry. While this angry, she ran into the demon Sim who tortured her a lot with visions of Scott being a negligent husband and everything. Eventually Madeline decided to join hands with Sim, giving her the ability to do sorcery owing to his powers. This gave rise to her becoming the Goblin Queen. In an alternate universe, we see that there is a force called the Goblin Force, which is a dark entity that has destroyed and replaced the Phoenix Force. Madeline Pryor, of this reality decided to accept the Goblin Force, which led to her body being transformed into her demonic version. Does she have the ability of psionic vampirism? Having someone who has the ability to infiltrate your mind with ease is something that is already very scary. But imagine if the person who has that ability can even drain your mutant powers. Sounds scary, doesn't it? Madeline Pryor is shown to have this capability herself. At first, we see her being able to do psychic siphoning, which allows her to take psychic abilities from other mutants with psychic abilities. She would steal their energy and use that to power herself or give it to someone else to increase their abilities for a while, as we have seen her do with Nate Gray. But as we progress in the X-Men comics, we notice something odd about Madeline. Madeline looked aged and completely withered, something that is reminiscent of someone else in the X-Men universe. If you are thinking of Celine, then yes, we are referring to her. Celine was the one who rampantly used to drain other mutants' powers, but that led to her looking aged and withered, which is exactly what Madeline looked like. In issue 52 of X-Men, we see this hinted at, which can mean two things. Either Madeline learned the psionic vampirism from Celine, or she stole some of Celine's powers by psionic vampirism, which led to her being this way. Nothing has been confirmed yet by the writers though, so all we can do is wait. Does she have magical abilities? When you are betrayed by your loved one, it is completely understandable if you want revenge. But what is not understandable at all is making a deal with the demon. This is exactly what Madeline did. Seeing her husband with his ex-lover, whom she is a clone, made Madeline realize that Scott's love for her was surface level at best, which led her to striking a deal with Sim and Nostri, the demons who have been trying to escape the limbo for a really long time. So. By the demon's touch, Madeline was granted the ability to use dark magic. This dark magic is what Madeline uses to bring people back from the dead. She can do simple and complex spells, heal wounds, summon demons, and locate any spirit with ease. She became the Goblin Queen and used her powers to find her young son, whom we know as the mutant called Cable. Does she have a resurrection ability? When it comes to her resurrection powers in the initial comics, she was brought back to life by other people. People like Nate Grey and Amora, the Enchantress, are some of the many people who have brought her back. Madeline's biggest appeal to the general crowd is that of a sexy villain and a powerful character with motives and emotional beats that fans can be sympathetic towards. This has led to her being brought back several times. She is truly one of those characters that always comes back even after seemingly years of disappearance. In the second issue, Dark X X-Men, we see Madeline mention her new resurrection abilities. She tells Alex, who is bleeding out in her arms, that if he dies, she will simply bring him back to life just to kill him off again. What is her darkest form till now? Jean Grey in her dark phoenix form was quite terrifying, but there is a form that is far more sinister and darker than that, and that is Madeline's form after she got powered by all three powers in the alternate dimension where the Jean Grey comics are set. In this alternate universe, Madeline was made the way she was in Earth 616, a counterpart of hers, and when she decided to join hands with Nostri and Sim, she got the Goblin Queen powers as well. Thanks to Sim, Goblin Queen had techno-organic powers. This meant 
that with the power, any technology and any organic matter would follow Madeline's instructions, even on an atomic level. When Jean Grey came across this version of Madeline, she was trying to save Nathan, Madeline's baby. Basically, Jean and Scott had found Nathan in a cryo chamber under the orphanage Scott grew up in, and when they rescued the child, demons started attacking them. One of the demons even tried to steal the baby and almost got away with it, but Jean heard the psionic cries and helped Scott retrieve the baby. However, as we find out, the demon that was trying to capture the baby was under Madeline's control. She wanted to use Nathan to open the portal from Limbo to Earth and make herself the ruler. In order to be the ruler, she killed off Mr. Sinister, Nastri, and Sim in the blink of an eye. She claimed proudly that she did not need any allies, and she meant it. When she attacked Jean, the Phoenix Force asked Jean to accept it, but Jean refused. This led to Madeline easily overpowering her and taking the Phoenix Force from her, becoming even stronger. Madeline's whole body took a red hue, and there was occult-esque symbols on her skin that were gold. This made her look extremely terrifying. She even had spikes protruding out of her body and her eyes were turned golden. This form definitely would have wreaked havoc, but in the end, when Jean spoke with Madeline, all the alternate versions of her gave her some pieces of their minds and Jean realized that the reason Madeline was angry was because at every step of the way, Madeline was made aware that she was a clone while Jean was allowed to stay blissfully unaware of her existence. Eventually, this empathic conversation turned Madeline back to who she used to be. Does she have the ability to control minds? As we know, Madeline is Jean's genetic copy. So, the same Jean that gave rise to Jean Grey having telepathic abilities, Madeline has those too. Even though at first she did not show the powers that Jean did at her age, the powers soon developed in Madeline. Once the powers were developed, Madeline made it very clear that while she may not be at Jean Grey's level yet, she was definitely at Psylocke's level with her powers. She is able to read and control people's minds with ease owing to this ability of hers. Her telepathic abilities also also help her close her mind off to Professor X, showing that she can also form a psionic shield and is able to mask herself mentally as well as physically. Just by concentrating a little, she can take over anyone's mind and use their body as her own. Not only that, she can easily manipulate someone's mind and change their personality if she wants to. Her control over her mind is so strong that if Madeline's physical body were to be killed, she could easily transform her mind into another host body. She can also make her victims feel pain just by touching their brows mystery behind Madeline Pryor's power to command demons from Limbo. Now, when Sim found the distraught Madeline, she was brought into Limbo. She was severely tortured emotionally by the visions of Scott's negligent tendencies, and Madeline eventually went into hiding while in Limbo. Now, while she was hiding in the Limbo from Sim, she came across Magic, the Queen of the Limbo. Magic trained the Goblin Queen in the arts of dark magic, and eventually taught her how to bring forth a weapon using her soul power, just like Magic can bring forth her soul sword. Magic eventually gave gave Madeline the power to rule Limbo, and with that control over Limbo, the Goblin Queen was able to manifest the Scythe of Sorrows. The Scythe of Sorrows was the weapon that put all of Madeline's regrets sadness, and guilt to use. The leadership of the Limbo was directly connected to the Scythe of Sorrow. Madeline used this Scythe to lead an invasion of demons into New York City, and when she decided to retreat, Hallow's Eve stole her Scythe and gave it to Chasm. This, in turn, made it difficult to get rid of the demons from New York. Eventually, Spider-Man and X-Man had to get the Scythe back and give it to Madeline to restore order. Can she reproduce? Nathan Summers is the child of Madeline Pryor and Scott Summers. As sad as it is, his birth was predetermined from the start. Madeline Pryor, his mother, was made by Mr. Sinister, who wanted to create a genetically superior child by combining Jean Grey and Scott Summers. As at the time Jean Grey was being reckless in her Dark Phoenix persona, Mr. Sinister made Madeline Pryor, and once she got the life force through the shard of Phoenix Force in her, Mr. Sinister sent her to work for Philip Summers to make sure she met Scott eventually. Soon enough, Madeline and Scott met, owing to her resemblance with Jean Grey. They got married and had Nathan. When Jean Grey returned, Mr. Sinister sent his marauders to capture Nathan and kill Madeline because he did not want Madeline to know that she was a clone. However, Madeline soon learned about it, and this led to her joining hands with Sim and Nastir, which led to her becoming the Goblin Queen to save her son. Nathan played a huge role in Madeline becoming the Goblin Queen, and there is no denying that a mother's love can push people to do quite a few morally grey things. Marvelous Verdict. Regardless of what you say about her power level and whether or not she should be as skilled as she is, you have to agree that Madeline is a powerful character to follow the journey. She has very legitimate reasons to be angry, and to a degree, even though her decisions are immoral, you can explain them away and understand why she did what she did. With Dark X-Men Issue 2, we learn quite a few things about Madeline, and as fans, we are dying to see where she ends up from here. 
And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone.